Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres, from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. I am your host, Sarah, and I hope you are having a fabulous September so far. Can you believe it's September? I I know, I talk about time all the time, all the time, (laughs) time all the time. I talk about time a lot, but that's because I feel like it is just speeding by at rapidly increasing rates. I cannot believe it is September that school is starting again that, you know, well, some schools have been going for a while, but I love all of the um, first day of school pictures that I see on social media. I love when my family sends me first day of school pictures of my nieces because I, you know, I miss them terribly and I just love seeing their little faces as they're off to school. I have five nieces, the oldest of whom is in the Navy, so she doesn't have first day of school pictures, but she uh, she's studying to be a nurse, so I'm so very proud of her. And then I have a senior this year, um, a freshman, freshman and senior. My brother has two girls in high school, and then my sister has a sixth grader and a first grader. So you get all kinds of really wonderful um, stories about school, and those are all just such great ages to talk about and Anyway, I hope that if you have children and they are off uh, back to school, that things are going well and that you are, you know, you're enjoying life and you're not too hot and you're not uh, too affected by, wow, everything that's been going on this summer between storms and, and fires and everything else. It is a scary, scary summer weather and natural disaster wise. So... I do hope that you are safe wherever you are, Um, regardless of whether your kids are going back to school. I hope that you are safe. So we are going to talk about some books today, and I wanted to actually go back to some uh, series that I've already covered and have now uh, done some more reading in, because if you listen to this podcast on any kind of a regular basis, then you know that I am always behind on my reading list. I have approximately 8 billion, 7 million trillion, you know, whatever number you want to put there, books on my reading list. And that list never gets any smaller, no matter how many books I read. So um, I'm always behind on my reading list. And when I'm talking about books, I often say, now this is a series, but I'm only on X out of um, Y books. So I thought I would go back to some of those and uh, update you a bit on where I am and what I think of the series now that I've moved a little further into it. So I'm going to look at um, the Spell Shadow series by Bella Forrest, which I talked about a few weeks ago. And I say a few weeks ago, it could have been a couple months ago. Again, I have no concept of time. I just want you to know. Uh, so the Bella Forrest Spell Shadow series, and then the second book in the Max Crumbly series by Rachel Renee Uh, Russell. And then finally, the second book in the Night and Moon series. Um, The first one was by Janet Ivanovich and Fief Sutton. The second was uh, by Janet Ivanovich as a solo author. So let's get started with that Spell Shadow series. And when I first started talking about it, I had only read the first book. Um, The first book was out. And I will reiterate that one thing I really love about this series is that there are six books in the series and they're coming out once a month. So you don't have to wait. Often with fantasy seri- books series, and this is um, fantasy, you have to wait a year between books. So if it's a six-year series, you spend you know five years basically waiting for the books to come out. And this has been really fun. This has been really fun in that they come out once a month. So the sixth and final one comes out the end of this month. So I have read up through five, uh, the penultimate book. I suppose I could have waited until the sixth one came out. But, you know, I really just like to say that word penultimate, which is, as Fancy Nancy would say, just a fancy way of saying the last, you know, the second to last. So five books have been out. Uh, if you recall, the series um, centered on a main character, 
named Alex, and the story is told from his point of view. Alex is, you know, a normal teenager living in, I think it's Indiana, if I'm remembering correctly, and he finds himself drawn into this world of magic that he, it's kind of an accident that he gets in there. His friend Natalie is taken um, by a, this creature, let's say, called Finder, into this uh, spell shadow manner. Alex follows her and ends up at this um, Academy of Magic. And so that first book is just kind of giving you the overlay, the over, um, giving you the background a little bit about this, this spell shadow manner and how Alex has snuck his way in. He has no magical ability whatsoever. And it's been described as Harry Potter meets Hunger Games. I wouldn't... I wouldn't say that that is the most accurate of descriptions, although it is a little um, less lighthearted than Harry Potter, and there uh, is some, you know, some violence and some things that happens in this in these books. So as the books have continued and progressed, we've learned more and more about this world. We've learned more about how Alex got sucked into this world despite not having magical abilities in the way that the other students at Spell Shadow Manor have. I, of course, don't want to give too many things away if you haven't read these books. One of the criticisms that I brought up the first time I was talking about this series is that people complained that things weren't fully developed in terms of, like, not necessarily characters, but in terms of some of the plot developments. And I would have to say that I, as I've read through them, I agree with that assessment a little bit more. I didn't notice it as much in the first book. Maybe I just wasn't paying good enough attention. But as the books have progressed, I feel like things happen a little quicker than they might. Like they're not fully explained. Like we get from point A to point D and we haven't really gone through B and C. And so things just they seem a little bit easy like they figure them out you know the they uh in the last book there's a section where several of the characters face um a series of challenges that they have to get through and it just feels like they're they just kind of breeze right through them there's not a lot of development as to how they get through them why you know it feels like it should have been a little more difficult or that we should have had a little more explanation as to the nature of these challenges and how they figure out how to get through them. So I will say that that is one criticism that I have of this book, that things, um, sometimes I find myself reading and I'm like, wait a minute, how did they figure out how to do that? Or did I miss something? Did they explain that elsewhere? And I suppose I can understand that if, you know, they are coming out once every month <laughs> and I don't know, you know, if she wrote them all at the same time or if she's writing them once a month. And so maybe, maybe she gets writing fast and kind of doesn't think about the, the natural progression. But I will say that's one criticism that I read and I am noticing more and more. I, However, saying that, I'm still really enjoying the characters. I'm enjoying the, um, develop, the plot developments and I'm interested to see exactly where she's going to take this and how she's going to resolve everything that um, has come up in the first five books. And that sixth book comes out end of September, I think September either September 29th or 30th. I don't remember off the top of my head, but the last one comes out and I am excited to read it and to um, find out the conclusion to Alex and Natalie's story as well as the other characters that they have gotten to know along the way and to see how she's going to wrap things up, how she's going to bring everything to its conclusion, how it's going to end, etc. So I do still recommend this series if you're interested, you know, if you like to read fantasy, if you like to read series, and you're looking for a series that is complete, by the end of this month, you'll be able to read all six books at once. You know, you won't have to wait even a month between them, but often with fantasy books, you have to wait up to a year between books. So it's uh, the first one is The Secret of Spell Shadow Manor. They are by Bella Forrest, and you can find them online on Amazon. Uh, you can get them on your Kindle. You can get them or as an E. You can do them on your e-reader or as paperbacks. So check them out if that's something that intrigues you. We are going to take our first break of the podcast, and when we come back, I'll be talking about Middle School Mayhem by Rachel Renee Russell. So stay tuned. 
always on the go, but the day just won't be one without your Hollywood fix. Let Golden State Media Concepts Entertainment Podcast take care of that. Jordan and Keith is Entertainment Tonight meets Access Hollywood. I'm Jordan. The guy laughing, that's Keith. <laughs> yeah, I'm Keith. An all-inclusive look of pop culture. Welcome back to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Before the break, I was talking about books um, two through five of the Spell Shadow Manor series by Bella Forrest. And now I want to turn my attention to a another young adult book, but uh, for slightly younger, I would say that the Spell Shadow Manor series would be for um, maybe mid to older teens and above. And then this, well, the title of the second book is called Middle School Mayhem. So it's definitely good for your middle school aged children. Children. And if you join me for the episode where I talked about the first one, the first one describes Max Crumbly, who is in middle school. He has been homeschooled by his grandmother for a long time. Now he's in public school and he's really struggling trying to find his place, trying to find where he fits in. And there is a bully, and the bully locks Max in his locker. Uh, at the very beginning of a three-day weekend, Max is terrified that he's going to end up stuck in his locker for the entire three-day weekend. He ends up getting out of his locker. He kind of figures out somehow that he can um, that the back of the locker is not secure as it should be, and he's able to get out. And he finds himself in this sort of secret part of the school that's been blocked off for a long time. As part of this, he goes through all of these adventures. There are. Um, there's a group of people in the building trying to steal uh, computer equipment. So he finds himself in the midst of that. In the meantime, he is communicating via cell phone with uh, his one. She's not even really a friend. She could be a friend. Uh, her name is Aaron, And he is talking to her. He finds her cell phone, I believe, if I'm remembering correctly, and ends up talking to her. And she ends up helping him in this. Now, that first book ends rather abruptly with a bit of a cliffhanger and the then the second one picks up right there where that first one ends with the, on that cliffhanger and the action just continues now there are several things that i like about these books first off are the illustrations rachel renee russell said that she worked on this book and its illustrations with her daughter nikki and i know that she wrote another series called the dork diaries maybe you're familiar with that i have not read those yet see again ginormous book list that i'm never going to catch up on um and she illustrates those and the illustrations are really clever and cute and um part of the story. So you'll be reading a paragraph and then the, there will be a picture and the picture will actually carry on. There will be, you know, some dialogue within the picture that actually moves the story forward. So you have to read the paragraph, read what's going on in the picture and then go to the next paragraph and the story continues in that way. So a little bit like a graphic novel in some ways. And um, that's good because it, it fits in with the storyline. Max also draws. So he he's saying that this is part of, he tells us that, that we're reading his diary basically and that he's done the illustrations and he loves comic books. And so he draws illustrations in his diary that are like the comic books that he reads and he likes superhero stories. So he's always saying, you know, if this were one of my comic books, then we would say the last time we saw our hero, Max Crumbly, he was trapped in his locker. And so there's just a lot of fun elements in this book, in these books. This one also ends in a cliffhanger. So uh, we're going to get another book. I do not know how many are in this series. I haven't looked that up yet. Um, kind of just enjoying living in the knowledge that there's another one coming. Um, the series, of course, is not done. So it is one of those things that you have to wait for. If you do want to pick it up, you're going to have to wait for the next one to come out. So the second one... Max is gaining more confidence. He is still stuck in this farce of trying to outwit the criminals who are trying to steal lab equipment. He's still running around in the school on a three-day weekend when no one is supposed to be there. He's still having the help of his friend Aaron. Um, you know, as an adult, I keep thinking, aren't Max's parents kind of freaking out right now because he didn't come home from school? Shouldn't he 
there's got to be a phone in that place. Can he not call his parents? <laughs> Can he not call 911? Um, but of course, you know, in stories like this, they, they always take things to just a little tiny bit over the edge of extreme because that makes them more fun and it makes them more adventuresome and those sorts of things that and they're a lot more fun to read. You know, if it was just a book where he got out of his locker and called 911, that's not much of a story, right? But so he's, he's in this adventure and he is gaining more confidence in his abilities and he is strengthening his friendship with Aaron and she is helping him from home. She's giving him advice. She has uh, mad computer skills that she's using to help him. She turned off the lights in one of the rooms to help him escape at one point. She does all of these different things and helps him to make it through this part of the of the story and like I said it ends on another cliffhanger so we'll have to tune in to find out what happens in the continuing adventures of Max Crumbly. So like I said I like these books for a lot of reasons. Um, <laughs> Max is very melodramatic like he uses lots of capital letters when he writes which makes me laugh and he is um, you know I appreciate it because he is a little bit of a dorky kid, as was I. I'm grateful that no one ever locked me in my locker for a three-day weekend, but I did once get stuck in a locker. I got locked in a locker. I will admit it. The janitor had to come get me out. I almost hyperventilated. Mm, yeah, not a fun experience. So I don't. I do not want to be locked in a locker for a three-day weekend. I was not a cool kid. I was definitely... Um, I was the dorky kid I, and I did dorky things, you know, like I was in marching band and band and I was in drama and all of those things. I got good grades and hey, I am proud of being a dork. My husband was a cool kid when he was growing up and that's cool too. You know, there's all different people. But what I love about this book, of course, is that the dorky kid is starting to try to face some of his problems, trying to figure them out instead of simply being a victim, which he is at the beginning of the book. He is a victim because he gets stuffed in his locker. He is now actively problem solving. He is gaining more confidence, which I think, you know, is going to help him once this and it's two books and we've only covered a few hours. So, you know, this if we covered the whole three-day weekend, which I really hope not because his parents have got to be worried about them. I know that they're not real, they're fiction, but come on. His parents are wondering where he is. That's all I'm saying. But he's gaining more confidence. He is gaining friendships. He is learning about himself, which, of course, is wonderful. And I don't know what middle school was like for you. Um, it was junior high for me. That's the way they, that's the grade system that they had when I was growing up. But it's just such a confusing time in terms of adolescence and hormones and weird things changing and you're trying to figure out and you're not quite a teen, but you're not still, you're not a kid. You want to have more independence, but your parents still think of you as a child, et cetera, et cetera. So books such as this, Max Crumbly, really help kids who think that they are different and who maybe are a little bit different know that it's okay to be different. It's okay to be a little bit of a dork or a nerd and to like the things that you like. Max likes comic books. Max draws comic books. Some of the, um, some of the kids in his grade might think that that's not a very guy thing to do, you know, because at that age, it's very black and white. So we're very, you know, they, kids can be very gender binary. They can be very, um, you know, us and them, and they want to make sure that they are in the right group. And so anything that's different, they don't appreciate. I'm totally on my soapbox here, and I apologize. But I'm just saying that I what I really appreciate is that Max... Had I read him when I was in middle school, I think I would have really resonated with him. And so I like that there are books out there who that really can give kids a different version, a different view, a different perspective. You know, it's not always just the quote unquote cool kids who get to do or, you know, get to be the popular, well, yeah, the, not the popular ones, but it's not always just about them, that they, that Everybody has different personalities. Everybody have, has different skill sets. And you can use those skill sets to make a difference in the world. 
and Max is trying to make a difference and he is learning about himself in this process. And I'm going to get off my soapbox now and go to another break. Okay. So when we come back, I will be looking at the second book in the Night and Moon series by Janet Ivanovich. So stay tuned and I will be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. We are talking about um, books that are part of a series and that I have covered before, but now I've read more of the series and so going back to those books. And I, it's not been that long since I talked about the Night and Moon series by uh, Janet Ivanovich. The first one she wrote with um, Fief Sutton and these have minds in the title, so Dangerous Minds and Curious Minds. And the most recent one that I finally just got around to reading is, well, let me back up. So the books are about uh, two characters who's last, who's uh, Emerson Knight and Riley Moon. And so Knight and Moon, that's where you get that. Emerson is eccentric. He is brilliant. He is um, a very, very wealthy, which helps because, you know, they can have adventures and not worry about how, how they're going to pay for them. Emerson is, I mean, excuse me, Riley is, she's a lot more buttoned down than Emerson, but she also has kind of this interesting collection of personality traits. So she has uh, multiple degrees from, I believe it's Harvard. She is, she was on a career path where she saw herself, you know, desk job, um, business attire, working in high finance, etc. And then she ends up working with Emerson in that first book. And in the second book, she's still working with him. She's actually working for him. She's trying to um, figure out his books, which are a mess because it's Emerson and he doesn't pay attention to that those sorts of details. He pays attention to lots and lots of details, just not finances as one of them. So they're still together and they got themselves involved in this crazy adventure in the first book. And of course, the second book, you know, you know, they're going to get themselves involved in another adventure. And this one happens when um, an acquaintance of Emerson's shows up. He is a Buddhist monk and he comes to tell them that his island has disappeared. So he is a monk who has been living on a secluded, um, un, uh, why did I just lose my word? Uh, he's the only person living on it. Just you, you come up with the word that I'm supposed to say right there. Jeez. He's been living on this island in, um, uh, around American Samoas in the in that region of the world, and he, some people come to the island and they kidnap him. They take him out on a boat, and when after several weeks he tries to find his island and it's gone. So he comes to Emerson and says, "My island disappeared," which of course is not really something that we expect to happen in the world to have an entire island disappear. Uh, but of course Emerson gets right on it. He's perfectly happy to. Um, except that weird things happen in the world and that an island could potentially disappear. He and the monk and his cousin Vernon and Riley end up on a cross-country adventure that takes them to national parks. So part of the book takes place in Yellowstone, which is fabulous because I grew up in Montana and so Yellowstone is near and dear to my heart. And um, they also go to Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. And so it's this whole giant plot, not plot, 
giant conspiracy, excuse me, there's a conspiracy going on, and I'm not going to tell you all about it, but a giant conspiracy that they have to unravel. And of course, because they stumble upon this conspiracy, then their lives are in danger and they have to run around trying to um, outsmart the criminals and uh, get away from the bad guys, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it is, um, you know, there's it's humorous. There's a lot of adventure. There's a lot of fun things that happen. And, you know, it's about an island that disappears just poof, gone. And they do actually explain what happens in terms of the island. So it is fun. It, it My only criticism, I really enjoyed it. Um, I like this type of book. You know, I've said it before, the kind of book that you can just escape into and enjoy and have just a really fun, relaxed read. My only criticism was that it ended, it felt a little abruptly. I mean, they wrap up the conspiracy and the that sort of thing. They figure it out, what's going on, but then it's just like they figure it out and boom, it ends. And maybe that's just me, and I fully admit that I would be more than happy if every book had a 20-year epilogue <laughs> tacked on to the end because I always want to know exactly what happens to every character for the next, well, for the rest of their lives, if that's possible. So it felt like it ended a little abruptly. That could just be me, but otherwise, uh, this is fun. If you are looking for um, good escapist reading, then these Night and Moon books, they're a little bit of mystery, a little bit of romance, um, you know, because there's a, there's a little bit of tension between Emerson and, and Riley that I would guess is going to turn into something at some point, just a little bit of um, snogging right now, but they're definitely leaning towards something more. So a little bit of romance, a little bit of humor, a little bit of mystery and adventure, and um, a lot of fun. So check those out if you are looking for some new reading material. I think I'm going to wrap it up there. I spent enough time on my soapbox in that middle segment, and so I'm going to start wrapping this up. I do want to thank you for joining me, as always. I love all of my listeners. I you know, your readers. So how can I not love you? Um, let me know if there's anybody that you would like to, any books that you would like to hear about, any authors that maybe I could get on the podcast interview. I've been doing that and I love it. Speaking of which, I hope you will join me next week when I will be interviewing author Fran Wild. She has written um, a collection of books and short stories in the gem universe. Um, one of them is called The Jewel and Her Lapidary. We are going to be talking about the third book in her trilogy that is coming out on September 26th called Horizon. The first two were Updraft and Cloudbound. So author Fran Wilde will be joining me next week for an interview to talk about her new book. So that seems appropriate since I have been talking about books in series and Fran's going to join me next week to talk about the third book, in her trilogy, in her series, um, Updraft, Cloudbound, and Horizon. So please join me next week for that interview. In the meantime, you can always find all of our podcasts at www.gsmcpodcast.com. You can download them on iTunes, on SoundCloud, on Stitcher, on our website, wherever it is you go for podcasts. And come follow me on social media, uh, interact with me on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, and Instagram. Uh, again, join me next week for my interview with author Fran Wilde. In the meantime, go out and get yourself lost in a good book. Thank you. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music, from sports, to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.